Okay, today's day 44, and I think you're gonna like this one. Day 44, I don't know why I never did this one before. Today we're gonna go over the immersion suit, also known as the survival suit, okay? So, I'm gonna go ahead and read off the instructions on here. So this might this might be a little while because I'm gonna read these instructions. I'm gonna put the suit on for you all, and then I'm gonna read the Solas requirements for the suits, which that may or may not take a little bit. And then I'll go over kind of some extra stuff that I was taught or whatever I've been told about them, which, you know, Remember, take all this with a grain of salt. It's just from what I've been taught, my own personal opinions, and what I've learned. So, the immersion suit. Typically, uh, they mostly come in adult sizes, and it's a universal size, but they do carry uh, adult kid sizes, and I know they make adult XL and XXL sizes. The last ship I was on had some big boys, so they they also had those sizes. Um, but typically, the adult universal is what you're gonna find. Man, I'm getting all sorts of messages right now. This one's pretty cool. The last one I had didn't have these like illustrated instructions here, but uh, this says complies with Solas IMO. RSMSC 20781 Donning Instructions If time permits, remove shoes. I'll go over some of the stuff I was told. Number one, if time permits, remove shoes. These are so hard to get into with your shoes on, it's almost impossible to begin with. But I've also been told you actually want to have your shoes on for the insulation purposes of it. But like I said, they're nearly impossible to get on with your shoes on. So, number two, insert legs and tighten ankle straps. Three, put non-dominant arm in and then the hood, then the other arm in. Very simple instructions. Pull zipper up and pull zipper up, taking care that clothing is not caught in zipper. Fasten flap. Inflate ring after entry into water. Six, relax. You cannot sink. Okay. So these suits, what do I got here? Whatever. Right. These suits are meant to be obviously worn in like below freezing temperatures. Uh, and they're also made typically of a waterproof, non-flammable material like neoprene, neoprene, neo yeah, neoprene, I believe. Uh, and they're mostly supposed to be in the international orange because it's one of the most visible colors. But I've also seen them come in like a international red, but I believe those are like the older style suits that are probably gonna be expired any year now. Who knows? So I'm gonna go over this. <laughs> this one's red. Yeah, look at that. This one's actually red. It's not international orange. And that is the point I was about to say is when you get to a ship, you should probably try this on within your first week and make sure that it fits you correctly. Even though they're adult universal, if you're a big hefty boy, your adult universal might be a little slim. You might need a bigger suit. If you get to the ship and you're like five foot two and only 120 pounds, you might want to get one of the kid sizes. So this is actually going to be my first time trying it on. Wish me luck. No shoes. Oh. One of the requirements I'll go over right now is that this suit is supposed to be donned or put on within two minutes. 
in an emergency situation, you're supposed to be able to put this suit on fully on within two minutes. So, go ahead and time it. Typically, putting these suits on, the easiest way to do it is sitting down. Non-dominant arm, as per the instructions. Oh. Best to put your first, your head in first. Oh no, the zipper. Inside out. Was that two minutes? This one's pretty good. The last suit I had, it was more like a mitten, so it's harder to grab things. Harder. Harder to grab the zipper. And this one also has this big like knob to grab the zipper. My last one was just a really big zipper. <sighs> this one's actually pretty cool looking. I'm a little short. Genius. I know why they put these bags in there. If you remember, the bag says remove shoes if time permits. I told you that what I've been told, you would want to wear your shoes in the suit for insulation purposes. That's why there's two bags in here. Genius. I don't know why I've never seen this before. You wear your shoes, you slip some bags over your shoes, you'd be able to slide your feet with your shoes on right through this. Because that's, that's why it's so hard with the shoes. Because your shoes have the rubber which grips onto this neoprene material. Um, this one's pretty cool. This one does not have a life jacket. Oh, that's what the 
That's what the air thing is, though, isn't it? Yeah. Inflatable. Okay. Light and whistle. And I'll tell you about these rings here in a minute as well. But let's go over the Solas requirements for said survival suit. The suit must be put on within two minutes, taking into account any associated clothing such as a life jacket and gloves if the suit is not equipped with such. Not all suits that have that crab hand, not all suits actually have fully enclosed hands. But if they don't have, like if the glove isn't part of the suit, the gloves need to be permanently attached to the suit and be able to be sealed off. Most suits nowadays, it's an attached mitten style, so. Uh, the suit will cover the entire body with the exception of the face. Hands shall be covered unless permanently attached gloves are provided. The suit shall not sustain burning or con The suit shall not sustain burning or continue melting after being totally enveloped in the fire for a period of two seconds. So, like I said, these suits are made from waterproof and flammable resistant material like neoprene. So you should be able to jump into a flaming body of water if need be and you should be able to be fully enveloped in flames for two seconds before the suit starts to melt your body and burn the crap out of you all right the suit shall not take in an ingress of water when jumping from a height of not less than four and a half meters so in the case of a abandoned ship if you're unable to board the life the lifeboat they take into account that you might need to jump into the water so the survival suit you should be able to jump into a, into the water from a height of about 13 and a half feet in the air and when you jump into the water the shoot the, the suit shall not rip or take an ingress of water into the suit from that 13 and a half foot jump. The suit is designed to be worn without a life jacket. It shall be fitted with complying requirements of a life jacket, light, whistle, and reflective properties. Light, whistle, reflective properties. And this here is the inflatable life jacket part of the suit not all life jackets will come some of them will have with like a, a block a block and inf not inflatable like a life jacket block on the head that will manually turn you over if you're face down um, and that's that's the point if if they're not made with the inf life jacket pillow or one of these inflatable life jacket things that are supposed to tip you up face up then they need to be worn with a life jacket because life jackets are made to flip you face up from a face down position in the water so all right now we're going to go into what the wearer should be able to do according to solas the wearer should be capable of carrying out normal work duties and climbing a vertical ladder of five meters. I actually forgot one, but they expect you to wear this survival suit and do normal work duties and climb a ladder of about 15 feet. That's ridiculous. They, they make other survival suits for like commercial fishermen that are much more capable of moving around but these ones that are fitted on commercial uh, ships like container ships tankers they're not really meant to be doing normal work duties and uh, another major part of this suit 
is the suit does not allow the body temperature to drop by more than one and a half degrees per hour for the first 30 minutes when water temperature is five degrees. So even if you're in five degrees freezing waters, you should be able to lay in this suit and if you're calm, lay in the suit and your body temperature will not drop more than 1.5 degrees for the first 30 minutes. So you're, it's meant to be in freezing waters and just lay in the water. So you're supposed to be able to work in it and jump 15 feet into the water. <clears throat> The wearer of the suit, with or without a life jacket, shall be able to turn from a face down position to a face up within five seconds. So, like I said, some of them are equipped with a, a float, floatable, what word am I looking for? A floatable block pillow that will manually write you up so you don't drown, so you're face up. This one has an inflatable one. So, like, in this instance, if I jumped in the water and got knocked out, would I be able to blow this inflatable life jacket up? No, I'm knocked out. So, it's not going to manually turn me over. That That's kind of sucky. But you should be able to turn over within five seconds with or without a life jacket. These suits are fully... Uh, they're fully buoyant. So... I mean, the, I can't remember the, the buoyancy for them, but, you know, I'm like 240, and you, you don't have to try to swim. You don't have to do anything. These, these suits are meant to just hold you and make you float on the water. Last thing, the wearer should be able to swim through 25 meters of water and board a survival craft. So... I had to wear these one of these suits in Piney Point for training, and we swam in the pool. These suits are almost impossible to swim in. They're, I mean, for somebody that hasn't been trained, it's really hard. The easiest thing to do is just to like backstroke it. If, you know, especially if you're not a good swimmer, it's easy, it's just to backstroke it. Now, I believe this is actually a requirement, but I could be wrong. These suits are generally fitted with a ring and a hook. So this ring and hook not only can be used to lift you up from the water in a situation where you need to be saved from the water, but you know, they're made to lift you up from the water, but also hook onto the buddy next to you and he hooks onto the buddy next to him that way you create a bigger international orange or bright red target to be found if you're not on a survival craft so that's what these rings are for they're both to clip you to other clip you to other sailors and then also to clip you to a um, emergency helivac or some sort. Uh, that's, that's what I got. Extra note, like I said, it's easiest to be put on in little to no clothing, but you should be getting into these suits with your shoes or your boots definitely use plastic bags if you're wearing shoes and you should be wearing extra layers because the more layers you have on the longer that 1.5 degrees drop of your body temperature is going to last okay they're they're meant to i was told that they're actually meant to take in water the suit is actually supposed to take in water not on the inside but it the material is supposed to take it in and create a body of water around you that your body temperature can warm up. But if you read about them, they say that they're not supposed to take any water on whatsoever because they're made of a waterproof material. 
but this this is going to take on water. Um, also, another really important thing to note: the suits are supposed to be almost like a snug fit, so you don't have air pockets. Now, even if you have a life jacket or a floatable pillow, if you put this suit on, and they tell you to put it on sitting down, but if you put this suit on, a good practice is to always do a squat in the suit, okay? Because even with a life jacket or a floatable pillow on the back that's supposed to right you, there's been cases where air pockets got trapped in the buttocks area of the survival suit. And so when they got in the water, that air pocket wasn't able to escape. And so they were stuck face down and they had to like basically squirm around and try to squeeze that bubble out. So note that, because that, that was actually taught to me by a captain who learned it in a training, he was an instructor. And it's kind of like, you don't hear about it very often. So in the survival suits, when you first get it on, first get fully suited up, very good practice to do a squat. Because the idea is when you do the squat, the suit gets tight around your legs and around your, your lower body, and it'll force any air pockets up through the face. So, yeah. I don't think I have anything else for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long. It was definitely more informative, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed the length of it. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share. I'll see you in the next one.